introduce our panel. Over here, Doug Richard, everybody knows Doug, no, he needs no introduction whatsoever, very famous from Dragon's Den, and, uh, and the angel investor, and one of the key Cambridge angels from back in the day, and now doing an excellent thing called School for Startups. Do you just want to mention that, just tell us what that's about? Sure, so School for Startups is for anybody who wants to get a condensed version of 20 years of how I failed at business all in a single day. Um, <laughs> I've been teaching it in Scotland for the last year, but we're bringing it down to London starting in June. Um, basically, the idea is to try to put very early stage entrepreneurs in a position where they know the drill and how to start a business. It is not about getting investment. It is about structuring a business for growth. So if you're interested in the seminars, just go to School for Startups Co. UK. They're going to be held at the British Library. Thanks. And by the way, you can actually get a discount on the a School for Startups program if you put a, use the word TechCrunch in the code, if you want to uh, partake in any of those uh, courses. Um, actually, these mics should all work, so let me just introduce next uh, Michael Smith, who's very well known as one of the entrepreneurs behind Firebox originally, one of the original dot-coms in the UK, and now doing Mind Candy and Moshi Monsters. Um, Michael, how's it going in Moshi Monsters? Yeah, Moshi's uh, going awesome. We just hit our two millionth monster adopted. It's four seven to 11 year olds, but if any of you guys want to adopt, you'd be very welcome. And uh, yeah, having, having lots of fun building that product. Fantastic. Um, next up is Alex Hoy, um, who is a uh, entrepreneur, angel investor, par excellence, and uh, a great guy to have a beer with, put it that way. Um, Alex, how's it going? You're with, uh, you, you're with Latitude at the moment, but you're also doing working with Skin Blinks and other people. Yep, um, I'm uh, working with uh, Seed Camp as well and, and Skim Links, my, my builder, a uh, whole bunch of startups and just fired up on what's going on in the European startup scene. And uh, I take offense, it should be at least two beers, I would think. Uh, I apologize. Um, last but not least, of course, uh, Julie Mayer from Ariadne Capital, um, extremely well known on the scene, uh, one of the great connectors of our time. Um, Julie, how's it going with you, and what's, what's new on the scene for Ariadne? Oh, gosh, what's new on the scene? Um, gosh, it's just intense. You would never know that something called a recession is going on, that's for sure. And, um, uh, yeah, no, just um, lots, <laughs> what can I say, lots going on. Excellent. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, we are going to have um, ten pitches in a row. Prepare yourselves. Um, the idea, what would, now let's take an audience vote. Um, I thought, we thought about having the, um, the back channel on after the pitch, but do you think that's a bit cruel for the pitchers? Yeah. No. Simple as that. Um, a lot of these guys, these guys are coming to this uh, fresh. Um, lot of, maybe you've heard of some of these startups or not, but these guys are coming to it fresh. So it's really up to these startups to get across um, the information as good as well as possible. So without further ado, unless I've forgotten anything, um, we're going to start. So Jenny from Effect Labs is now our first startup, and you have two minutes starting now. Do I get slides? Oh, slides. Mm. I apologize. I should have the stop. Okay. Okay. Oh, right, right. Okay, you have two minutes starting now. All right, my name's Jenny. I'm co-founder of Affect Labs. We're based in Edinburgh, and I'm just going to tell you all about us, really. We're helping brands monitor their brand intelligence online and understand what people are saying about them. So the problem online, as most of you probably know, is that information is everywhere. It's growing. There's more and more social networks cropping up. It's really, really hard to keep track of what people are saying about you. And a lot of brands are wasting time and money using complicated products or getting a headache from using Google Alerts too much. So we're trying to fix that by improving alert services out there and basically creating Google Alerts on steroids. We're using language technology that was developed at Cambridge, and it actually looks into the online conversations going on, uh, examining the messages and telling you what people are saying that's positive and what's negative, just making it really, really easy for people to see what's going on online. So this is how it all fits together. The product is called Benchmark 7, and we cover a variety of media. Anything with an API, even if it's brand new, we're going to hop on that and build that into our system. We cache data so we can tell you about historical changes to your brand, and we deliver a web portal as well as an open API that lets you do cool things on different platforms. If you want to embed our data into election results, something like that, you can do. 
So how are we going to make money? We're doing the sort of tried and tested freemium model. We're having a free trial. A lot of our competitors are really, really hard to get going. And you know, they require lots of sign-ups. They require lots of money. We're changing all seconds. that. We're making it really easy for people to use our product. Our team involves myself. I did a PhD at Cambridge, which I left to start this business. My co-founder is an expert in sales. And what are we after? Money. We're looking for some seed funding at the moment, about 100K to get to beta and to get some design expertise on board. So in summary, we're trying to help brands understand the internet. It's very hard at the moment. We're making it easy. And we want your money and your custom. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Under two minutes. Um, who would like to kick off the questions? Julie. Jenny, that's interesting. What is the desired outcome from um, a brand that works with FX Labs? Is it that they, um, you know, what do they do on the other side of the information that you give them? They make some sort of change, but how does it come across not being contrived or artificial or, oh, here's how we're going to manipulate things now? We basically make it really easy for people to tap into what people are saying about them. So if you wanted to look specifically what people were saying negative and then reply to that as a customer service mm -hmm. option. We're going to make it easy for you to do that. So it will display Twitter messages and you can reply from within our web service to those Twitter messages, um, either with custom messages or with pre-filled ones, although we don't recommend using the same message for every single reply, obviously. Um, other than that, it's really just helping people see at a glance what's going on around their brand and making decisions accordingly. We're not going to make the decisions for them. Alex, any thoughts? So. We at Latitude use a lot of these uh, similar services, Radian 6 probably being the biggest one. How would you differentiate what you would do from the 20 that are already out there uh, chasing after a market that hasn't really developed yet? Our key difference is our language technology, which is based on sentiment analysis, which is something that I was studying as I say, for, at Cambridge for three and a half years. That's something none of our competitors have. Um, they don't have that level of knowledge about the messages that are going on. They just do things like count how many times the brand is mentioned and things like that. And we actually filter and make it a lot easier for people to access that data. So we're really trying to simplify things for them with the help of natural language technology. Uh, I have to. On the one hand, I think that if you can find a way to broadly distribute this to small business, there's probably an opportunity. But you have to be careful about it, your assertion that no one else does sentiment analysis. What you really need to say is others assert they do sentiment analysis, because they do. And they sell their they, assertion of sentiment yeah. analysis. Now, whether you do it so much better that what they're doing is merely crude bullying and manipulation, that's fine. But they don't actually develop their own. The only company we know of, Scout Labs, mm -hmm. actually licensed that in. And so we have the strength that we're developing it from scratch. So we get to, you know, we cover every social media. Their technology only covers blocks because they're buying it in. So we have that major advantage over them. Um, yeah, I Michael. thought it was a good pitch. Lots of um, images, minimal text, kept it very simple. Who, who are you ideally selling to here? Because there's a pretty broad audience from PR companies to small businesses to big brands to individuals. Are you going to go after one specific audience? We're initially targeting small to medium-sized businesses. We want the people who can't afford, you know, the really big market research services. We want to do the sort of Salesforce model. People just whip out their credit card and buy it. Uh, the specific sector we're going for first is games PR, because I was a games journalist for three years, so I have a lot of contacts in that area. But we've already had customers like interested signing up from companies from Mothercare to Ustream TV. There's a lot of interest out there, and we're already getting them on board. Excellent. Um, we've got time for one question from the audience. Who wants to have a go? Everyone's got it. Right. Jenny, thank you very much. <laughs>